they are going after Steam again. Time for us to have a talk about Steam because quite a few stories are going on with it. Steam is actually being banned in one country. It is being invested. Most likely Argentina. It's always Argentina. Investigated in another country for anti-competitive practices. And that's the kind of thing that basically is just going to be a headache for Valve going forward. They have a really, really strong position in the market and all the big publishers know they have got to port their games onto PC to survive and to do that well you basically have got to do it in steam and just that concentration of power means they're gonna catch more flack naturally so we'll talk about that that's true but also for devs who are already on steam there is some good news actually on the story of the adult swim games catalog and uh, it's delisting that really sucked and there's good news there and also one developer has basically had all that he can take of steam user generated tags basically selling his game to the wrong audience and he's trying to fight back. It's a really weird story, a case where a dev's made a real cool game, but has absolutely found himself in quite the pickle. And we would be in quite the pickle without the help of today's sponsor. Our mates over at boot.dev whose mission it is- No. It shocked me because rather than just giving you times that I've seen- No. Minded ...pretty frequently over go. the last few weeks of the whole PlayStation Network mess, Steam is very much a global platform, but recently it's uh, just got a little bit less global, and that's because the whole thing is gone in Vietnam. Now, this has been sourced- Ah, uh, Vietnam was my second guess. All the way back to Vietnam Net, which suggests that this may have came because of complaints from local publishers and developers, right? So they've basically got their government to ban Steam. It's kind of crazy. So here's a quote for you. Steam is blatantly distributing games in Vietnam, including violent games and adult games without asking for permission. This is unfair for domestic distributors. Management agencies need to tighten control over the cross-border platform or domestic game distributors will die in the home market. So this is actually where it gets fascinating for us because it's not really a problem we do. That's interesting. Deal with it in most of our countries, but for them, it kind of is different. For example, and kind of similar to what goes on with the Chinese version of Steam, loads of games released in Vietnam are required to edit out the blood, right? And violence can only go so far. Unlike with China, Steam have not built. Oh, yeah, in China, you can't have Skellington showing. It was, it was for religious reasons, I guess, or something like that. I don't remember. But yeah, this is the China version of World of Warcraft. Their own version of the platform to be compliant in that region. So even though Steam can sell games in Vietnamese Dong, they actually don't have to play by the rules of the oh, it looks so worse. country. And then that immediately puts distributors in the region at a disadvantage because if you're a Vietnamese game distributor, well, tough luck, right? You've got to comply with the government. But if the mighty network of Gabe Newell is all across the world and supports your currency, then why is anyone going to go and get the version of a game from you, the local Vietnamese distributor, right? So it's not really a surprise that the regulator has got loads of complaints, and this is actually similar to how they also got Netflix channel. Oh my god, it's just a bunch of bread. Wow. Okay. Challenged for offering their games with no modification for that market as well. So one way of looking at this story, and it would be really easy to do this, is to say that Valve were out there challenging regional censorship, and that for Vietnamese gamers, this was awesome because they were able they probably did not able to get their video games without any you know, compromising things being done to sell in the region. And that is actually the reality on the ground and it was awesome for them. But of course, the fact is that Steam do modify their platform all the time in other regions. The most obvious is Steam China existing, but Steam actually do still geoblock certain purchases for users in Germany based on content. Um, you know, nah, icons- so stupid Germany as always, the weakest of the losers. Such as a um, certain Hindu symbol, <laughs> I believe. Um, you know, pretty obvious reasons why. <laughs> but what's interesting nice. is the German law about uh, national. Hey, you can't give the Germans anything, okay? You 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 still you still say the right phrase, and all the old timers are still are you know getting up from their chairs and doing that thing with their arm. Uh, by the way, that's not a joke. National socialist uh, iconography that was lifted in the country in 2018. So even though that was lifted in Germany, actually some of that stuff is still being applied by Steam. And of course, if you buy a game in Russia, um, well, then of course it ends up getting geolocked to stop cheap key grifting.
you know, where games just end up on like key reselling websites. And then of course, depending on the region you're in, you actually can't use your local currency to pay directly on Steam. Instead, you end up using Steam's own currency conversion into, well, examples like MENA USD or LATAM USD, right? So a funny little thing that most people don't know. This ends up basically falling into the opposite problem that Sony have got with PlayStation Network. Steam is available in every country to the benefit of customers there and the benefit of Valve. This global revenue is awesome for everybody involved, but of course there are the requirements of all of those global countries. And if you're global first and you're only not global if a regional problem crops up, then well, for Valve, it ends up in a situation like this. And if your bottom line is gonna be threatened as it was with some of the stuff in China, then you will end up having an incentive to do something like deploy Steam China. So realistically, this is far less a case of Steam doing a like righteous anti-censorship thing. It's not really that, it's rather that they just don't see enough money in Vietnam to bother doing anything about it. Now, speaking of following the rules. Makes sense. I mean, why would you expect them to do, do all of that for just random reasons? It actually turns out that Valve may be facing some more scrutiny. Now, this was an interesting one. It is the Polish government taking on Steam and Sony. And being real with you, Poland, right? It's a country in the EU. And the EU has been able to swing its whatever about, um, throw its weight around, let's just say, on um, anti-competitive matters, right? Like that's one of the reasons why iPhones uh, went to USB-C, a lot of uh, EU pressure. Of course, you've got the Digital Markets Act. So being in the UK, I cannot use an alternate app, uh, like an alternate app store on my iPhone. If I just go across the border, into the Republic of Ireland, uh, which, you know, technically is obviously in the EU, whereas Northern Ireland is in the UK, therefore uh, it's not in the EU, then um, I can, you know, then, then I could use an alternative app store. So uh, a bit of a funny little situation. Point is though, this is happening with Poland. Poland is in the EU. And I wonder if this is the sort of thing that could end up spiraling. Can we get more to the fact that someone's trying to do bad things to Steam? Because, you know, I care about that a little bit more. Right, that maybe some other countries in the EU may also make a bit of an issue out of this. So if you're involved- Okay, let's place bets. Do you think this is going to be a classical problem of Valve does nothing but exists and don't add, you know, shitty anti-user things to their platform while their competition just constantly keeps shooting themselves in the foot? with, you know, anti-consumer things and stupid shit like that. It's you, it typically is, it's not even Valve's fault that everyone else is just being completely retarded. <laughs> Valve's legal department, this is certainly something that will be across your desk that you'll be thinking about. So, this was spotted by Maru NL and Game World Observer. Basically, the Polish Office for Competition and Consumer Protection are starting a preliminary investigation into companies operating in the region for anti-competitive practices, right? So that's what they've said. And this isn't the first we've heard of this story. This is more a major new update in it because they had already done a review of several developers and publishers. Like, they even went to the PlayStation regional office in Poland. Poland, so now what they're doing is they're analyzing the evidence. And what they're saying they're looking for is this, right? Evidence of dominant players using their position to enforce anti-competitive rules. And this is what they say it includes. Yeah, that's what anti-competitive is. I, <laughs> that's an interesting sentence because, well, that's, yeah, that's exactly what the anti-competitive is. But there's no way they're going to prove this, right? Because anti-competitive, if a, a Valve is anti-competitive, that means that they are intentionally trying to destroy their opponents through whatever means possible applying restrictions on the now admittedly the steam sales could be counted as that maybe if if someone gets lucky or unlucky because the steam sales is something that no other platform can probably ever match up Sale of games and ancillary content on competing platforms or online stores, interfering with pricing and discount policies of game developers and publishers, or restricting market access to competing platforms and other digital service providers. And you may see that and think, why is it? The second part is essentially uh, that Val that someone wants to sell their product on, uh, on Steam, and Valve says, Hey, okay, we're gonna let you sell this, but you can't sell it on any other platforms. Effectively, you know, console exclusiveness only is for PC. 
that could uh, that is the second part there now admittedly proving that pretty easy if you have emails pretty hard if you don't a company saying hey you can't sell your product in that other store well i mean think about some of the big deals that happen in regular brick and mortar retailers like you actually do have a lot of these big companies with a lot of power playing genuine goddamn hardball with each other now in the case of valve and steam well they actually do have a bunch of restrictions on what you can do on other stores. So a lot of the time somebody may say, hey, a developer, can I not just like buy a DRM free version of your game on your own website and more of the money will go to you? Well, in many cases for the developer, it's actually better for them to lose the cut to Valve because a sale happening on Steam is probably going to be useful to the Steam algorithm. So it's actually better for like a developer's bottom line that Gabe and co get their fee because that will just mean more spread in Steam. Anyway, so this is something that Valve have actually been facing in the USA as well. And this is the fact that they mandate mm. the prices on Steam can't be undercut on other stores. And then the other thing, which is the restriction in the sale of games, PlayStation are actually facing a consumer rights tribunal. Hmm. Well, the thing is, I'm not sure if that counts as anti-competitor, because pricing shit is commonplace. I don't know if anyone else has been gotten for uh, for that, because you know, yeah, it kind of, it, it, Valve uh, Valve has that as a self-protection thing. They can argue that most likely because okay, if someone sells their thing on uh, on Steam. And it's 10,000 euros. But, and, you know, then people start making fun of Steam for selling this game for 10,000 euros. And then, and then people start talking, hey, you can go to this side and get it for like, you know, 5 euros. So shenanigans like that don't happen. Interesting that is relating to basically how they remove the ability to purchase digital games on third-party platforms. So, in both cases here, these are things that have been given enough consideration by the legal system, right, uh, involved in those countries, for it to move from that primary stage to the secondary stage of basically what could end up being a trial, right? So this is actually pretty serious stuff. And again, this is happening in Poland. Poland is an EU country. Oh, by the way, granted, I have absolutely no real clue about any of the real liar stuff. I just know very, very minor and basic st uh, stuff here. Oh, boy. Interesting. I'm assuming Valve's gonna be fine. Look at what's going on with the Digital Markets Act. And of course, there are differences, like, obviously, between the Apple App Store and, uh, and Steam, right? Like, they are completely different platforms. But still, this is the type of thing the EU are taking real seriously. Um, and, I mean, you could totally see, uh, you, you could see a reality where the EU could end up saying, uh, no, you can't control that, actually. A developer can sell a game for whatever price on their own website, you can't do anything, Steam, tough luck, if you want to operate in the EU and not be fine to shit. So, that's the kind of thing that, obviously, for us as consumers, would be positive. For Valve, though, obviously, this is something that they're probably going to want to take very seriously in the legal front. Now, this could be specifically relevant in Poland because of GOG formerly known as Good Old Games. Uh, of course, they're owned by CD Projekt, and uh, if a developer lists their game on GOG cheaper than Steam, then they lose the ability to have their game on the bigger platform. So imagine CD Projekt Red doing a game like, uh, uh, let's just say The Witcher 4. If that was, say, 10% cheaper on GOG because they own it, then they would not... Uh, again, you need to prove... In this case, they're not going to win. Because in this case, they need to prove that Steam is asking this this part to with a malicious intent behind it, with an anti-competitor uh, uh, intent behind it. But the fact that you can't se uh, sell it on your platform lower than Steam, that that's not anti-competitor necessarily, you know? Because, well, it... it if you are because th this is how the argument uh, gets played out uh i sell a, a, i put a game on steam and it's worth 20 euros right and then i get mad because i can't sell the game under 20 euros but but i need to prove that uh, you know you by doing this you're being anti-competitor to steam if you want to intentionally put it for 20 euros on Steam, but then you sell it for 
five euros, you know, on your own site and the actual price is five euros, you know, you're being anti-competitive to Steam because you're trying to, uh, you know, destroy them by doing tricks like that. And Steam can just say, hey, this is why we do this, so no one takes advantage of, uh, of us. And then you need to prove it that it's not a self-defense strategy that Steam is employing, that it's actually a willful evil strategy, which doesn't make sense. And Steam has the uh, Steam has the other opportunity of saying, well, if you want, if you if you want to sell it for five dollars, then you just simply post it on Steam for five dollars. There's no problem with that. We allow that. And I don't know how you actually deal with that at all. Because, again, that's all the Steam needs to say. Hey, this is not anti-competitive. If he wants, if this company wants to sell uh, their game for $5 on their platform, that's fine. As long as they sell it on Steam also for 5 And there is absolutely uh, no counterplay to that. Because it's just, because it's their choice at the end of the day. And unless you and unless you admit to wanting to manipulate the pricing, then there is no reason for you to ever be against what Steam is offering here. So again, this is going to be a bunch of nothing, most likely. Not be able to sell on Steam whatsoever, right? Valve would boot them off. And of course, you could say that would be silly for Valve to do. Think of all the money that Valve would make from selling that game on Steam, even if people could get a better deal elsewhere. Yes, but the second Valve does that once, well, the whole foundation Everything would just kind of crumbles. crumble. Other de yep. devs would be like, uh, hey, um, we also want why that. can we not do what they're doing? So again, this is all just putting pressure on Valve from a policy perspective, and that could impact all of us because we buy games on Steam. All of this basically suggests then that the whole global digital market, the decline of physical games, that it's just making all of this stuff be more important. And, uh, of course, by default, the incumbents like Valve and Sony, they, you know, they, they do kind of benefit as things go more and more digital. It's interesting stuff. We don't know how this is going to pan out, but this actually wouldn't be the first time that Valve have had trouble in the EU this decade because they actually broke EU antitrust law relating to geo-blocking agreements with loads of publishers in 2021. So that kind of got cracked by the EU. And then if Poland decides in this case that it's in line with those EU regulations, then this could really, really impact things. Now, of course, this would be bad for Valve. But what it would mean is more options, more competition. And of course, competition is ultimately good for consumers. It's one of those things I think of, I mean, is Valve like literally a monopoly? No, you can buy and sell games in other places. Is it true that Valve has a humongous amount of power? Like, yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. it is true. Now, I think of all of the stores, right? They do seem to be the most benevolent, like given their size. They are fairly pro-consumer. Um, they do give game developers a lot of really... I will argue that Valve is not pro-consumer. The difference is that Valve is, does not go out of their way to implement something shitty for the consumer. Good tools. And they've actually built a platform with such good discoverability features that they are more than just a storefront. That's where it gets interesting to me with Valve. They're basically in a game discovery and matchmaking business. Because how many people um, go to the Epic Games Store, see something, think, oh, that's new, I'll buy it. They don't, because the Epic Games Store doesn't really do those things that Steam does. So that's where it gets interesting to me. I do see Steam, obviously, as a storefront, but I also see it as a recommendation engine. And so as a developer or a publisher, you do get pros and you do. Anyone remember when Epic did that whole thing about being against Apple because they didn't want to pay the percent that Apple wanted them to pay that everyone else pays? And then they tried to make it like, Man, the Epic Games is against Tyranny! <laughs> that was hilarious. Do get cons from Steam, but that recommendation engine, my god, it is strong. The next thing then is our friends at Warner Bros, who have finally made a good decision. Um, so, hmm. I don't know, maybe that feels weird to them. Uh, now, of course, this is not about the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League game. No, this is where Warner... Do they need to make Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League 2 or whatever they want to call it? That would be epic. Bros were just very cruelly and needlessly delisting games that had came from the Adult Swim label, and that just meant that a lot of uh, small titles, a lot of pretty beloved, just cool niche things, 
which is really the whole Adult Swim, like, gist, a lot of those just risked being deleted from the internet, which would have sucked. And it was all because WB would rather delete the Steam pages than do the very simple process on the Steam backend to transfer them, right? Like, literally, it would take minutes for each game. So what happens... Oh, uh, yeah, I don't care about game preservation. You can care if you want, I don't, and that's simply the end of the discussion. I don't care. If you want to care, go for it. I don't care. <laughs> ah, it is what it is. Anyway, I think Steam is going to be absolutely fine. Proving, the, proving that they are doing intentionally stuffy stuff by being motivated as anti-consumer is really going to be hard. Anyway, that was it for Billion. This was Quizzer Sensei. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. And thought any. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.